Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. Welcome back to part six of my tutorial series on building a Type Racer clone. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be going over getting the user input as well as displaying the sentence that the user has to type out. All right, so to start off, we're gonna be within our Type Racer component. And I think I wanna start with displaying the sentence that the user has to type out. So over here, I'll just say import display words and we're going to create this component now and once we import it let us include it within our type racer component so we have our countdown our start button and let us add this here so we'll say display words and display words is going to take in two props the actual words that we want to display and it's going to take the player. Okay, so we already have our player up here. We just need to pull out words from our game state. So let's go ahead and add that. Okay, after that, we're all good. So let's save this. Let's open the package explorer. Let us create this component. Let's get rid of that. And now from here, we only need one import. We're gonna import React. And we'll just do the standard React stuff. So we'll create our display words component. And we should get back the words and player. Okay, let's go ahead and export this. So what we want to do is split the sentence or sentences we get into three parts. The first part is we need the words that we have to type out. The second part is the current word that we're on. And the third part is the words that are left that we need to type out. And the reason we need to split it into three parts is because we're going to apply different CSS styles to each of them. So first, let us return some JSX. We're gonna use a React fragment. And we're gonna create three helper functions. The first one is gonna be called get typed words. So this is gonna be all the words that the user has typed out. And we'll pass in words and we'll pass in the player. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this for now. And I put them out here. So let's go ahead and declare that function. All right, so to get started, we need to get all the typed words. So we'll say let type words. And what we're gonna do is say words.slice, because remember words is an array. And we're gonna pass in index zero because that's our starting point. And we wanna go up until where the player currently is. So we'll say player dot current word index. And this is gonna go up until one less than where the player is currently. So we start at index zero. Let's say the player is at index five. We'll get a subarray back between zero and index four, okay? So that's gonna be all our typed words. So this user typed all those words correctly. Next, what we're gonna do is I wanna join all those words. So we'll say typed words is gonna be equal to type words dot join. And we wanna space between each of those words. Next, what we're gonna do, all we need to do is return some JSX. So we're gonna use a span tag and we're gonna use the style prop and we are gonna pass in typed correctly style. And we haven't created this yet, so that's okay. And all we need to do is render this out. So we'll say typed words, okay. So let's go ahead and create this. 
Now you could create a separate CSS file. I just did it within the actual component. So we'll just say cons type correctly style. And since these words are correctly typed, what I did was highlight it. Now I give it like a lime greenish color. You could do whatever you guys want. So we're just going to say background color and this is the value. All right, so we're done with all the words that our player has typed out correctly. So now what we want to do is we want to get the current word that the user is on. So we're going to create another function. I called it get current word. And again, we're going to pass in words and we're going to pass in the player. Okay. And I also put it up here. So let's go ahead and create it. And this one is very, very, very simple. So all we need to do is just return it. We're going to create a span. Same exact thing. We're going to give it a style. And I just called it current style. And within here, why does it always do that? And within here, what I want to do is output our word. So within our words array, we already know where the player is currently at. So we could just access it by saying player dot current word index. And I should note that we actually need a space in between here. Otherwise, these words here and this word here are going to be mushed together. So just add a space here. And let us create our current style. So let's come up here. And for this, the only thing I did was I wanted the text to be underlined. So we'll give it a text decoration. And we just said underline. All right, so we got all the words that we typed out. We got the current word that we're typing out. Now we need to do the words that we need to type out. So let's come down here and we're going to create a new function, get words to be typed. And likewise, we're going to pass in words and we're going to pass in the player. Let's go ahead and copy this and let's create it. So just like get typed words, we're going to use slice again. So we're going to say let words to be typed. And what we're going to do is say words dot slice. And this time, instead of starting at index zero, we want to go one above where the player is currently at. So we'll say player dot current word index plus one. And we want to go until the end. So we'll say words dot length. Okay. So now that we got all the words that we need to type again, we're going to join it. So I'm going to say words to be typed going to be equal to words to be typed dot join. Join it by a space. So for this, I actually didn't create a style, but you guys can. I just returned a span. And also just add a space here, because if you don't add a space here, the current word and the words to be typed are going to mix together. Okay, so. For now, let us save this. Let's double check. And let's just see if we're getting something. So I'm going to come here and we're already getting an error. Line 24 says typed words is not defined. So typed words is not defined. We're going to go copy that. Paste that there, let's save it. 
And there we go. All right, so we're going to create a game. And we have this displayed. So you can see that nothing's highlighted. So where are we? So get type words is not returning anything, which is good because we haven't typed anything. Get current word is working. See, the current word is index zero. And get words to be typed is also working. You can see that there is no style being applied to the rest of the sentence. Okay. So with that out of the way, let us actually get the user's input. So we'll close out of that, come up here, and let's go ahead and import our component we're gonna create. I just called it form. And let's give us some space over there. Let us bring it in to our type racer component. So we have form. And as props, what we're going to take in is, is open, is over. And we're also going to take in the game ID. Okay, so all we need to do is pull out is open and is over from the game state. And now let's go ahead and save this. Let's open up the Explorer. Let's create that component. And close out of that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be importing is always React. And we're also gonna be importing a couple of hooks. So the first hook is gonna be the use state hook. Second hook is gonna be use ref. And the third hook is gonna be use effect. Next, let's go ahead and import our socket. And now let us create our form component. So what I'm gonna pull out from props is everything we pass down. So is open, is over, and game ID. Next, let us just export it. All right, so we're going to declare a user input state. And for now, what we'll do is we'll initialize it to an empty string. All right, so now I just want to cover what we're going to be rendering out. So we're going to return basically just a form. So first, we're going to wrap it within a div. And this div is going to have a class name of row. And I also want some space on the Y margin. Okay, next we're going to create our grid. So I'll have a div here and we'll give it a class name of column small. All right, so let's go ahead and make three copies of this. And in the middle one, we'll make this of four. Okay, next let's go ahead and make our form. And we get rid of this action. And within here, we're gonna create another div and we're gonna give it a class name, a form group. And let's give it a input field. Okay, so the type of text is all right with me. Next, we're gonna give it a prop of read only. And I'll explain why in a second. And we're gonna do some JavaScript within here. So first, I only want read only set to true if is open is true or is over is true, okay? Next, let me go on another line. I could fit everything. Next, we're gonna have an on change prop and we're gonna pass our on change handler. We haven't created it yet. We're also going to have the value and we're going to set this to the state. So user input. And finally, we'll give it a class name of form control. All right. So the reason that I want our input to be read only 
is because I don't want the user typing anything within the text box when the game hasn't even started. So this is checking to see if the game is open. That means the game hasn't started yet and is over. I'm checking because I don't want the user typing anything once the game ends. That doesn't make any sense either. OK, there is one more prop that I completely forgot about, and it's the reason why we're bringing in our ref hook. So I'll attach that now and we'll go into it later within this video. So I called it text input. So this is what we're going to be rendering out to the user. So now we got a couple of functions to create. We have our on change function to implement. So let us go ahead and do that. So we'll just come up here and say const on change. We should get back the event object. And what we're going to do is so the first thing I'm going to do is get the value that's within the text box. So we'll say let value equal e dot target dot value. Next, what I want to do is I want to get the last character. And the reason why I want to get the last character is because I am effectively listening for when the user hits the space bar. So the user hits a space bar. That means he's submitting this word for the server to check. So in order to get the last character, I'll say let last char. And what we're going to do is say value dot char at. And that's going to be at value dot length minus one. So this is going to give us the last character that the user typed out. Next, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and check to see if the user hit the space bar. And if the user hit the space bar, what we're going to do is send this to the server. So we're going to emit an event called user input. Of course, we have not created that yet, but we will. And we are going to pass back the user input and we are going to pass back the game ID. OK, so the idea is you want the server to check if the client typed the word right. You never want the client to check himself. OK, next, what we're going to do is we are going to reset the form. So we haven't created this function either, but we will. And otherwise, if the user has not hit the space bar, what we're going to do is we are just going to set our user input to whatever the value is. OK, so let's go ahead and make this reset form. And all our reset form is going to do is set our user input to an empty string. OK, now next, let's actually use our use ref and use effect hook. So it's more easier if I show you what I'm trying to do than actually trying to explain it, if that makes any sense. So the first thing, let's actually use our use ref. So I'll just come up here, const text input. And we're just going to say use ref and we're going to pass in null. Afterwards, we're going to use our use effect hook. And within our dependency array, we are going to check to see if is open changes. Now, there's a reason for this. And I'll give it to you in just a second. But within here, once we listen for that change, we're going to check to see if is open becomes false. So if is open is false, that means the game has started. And what we're going to end up doing is telling our text input to focus. And what focus is going to do is it's going to bring our cursor within the text box. OK, so by default, we set our text input to read only because the game hasn't started yet. Once the game starts, which is why we are listening for is open, is open becomes false. I want you to focus the text box. And that's going to put our cursor within that text box so the user can immediately start typing out this sentence. 
So let us go ahead and save this and we could test out that functionality. So let us come here. We'll give us a nickname. We'll say start game. Countdown starting and we should focus here if everything goes to plan. Okay, you see what happened here? That's our use effect taking place. Okay, so that's working for now. What we need to do is come to the server and actually listen for this user input event. So let us go ahead and close out of this. Let's bring up the Explorer. Let us go ahead and go to app.js for the server side. And let's go ahead and create this listener. So come up here and we'll just say socket.on and we are emitting a user input. So we'll listen for a user input. And this is also gonna be an asynchronous function. And we are gonna pull out the user input and we are gonna also pull out the game ID. Okay, so we're gonna wrap everything within a try catch block. And for now, we'll just print out the error. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we always have to look up the game. And we'll just pass in the game ID here. Next, what we need to do is we need to check to see if the game has actually started. So what we're going to do is say if game dot is open and that the game is not over, then we are going to execute this code. So if game is open is false, that means the game has started. So we're listening for users input. And if the game is over is also false, that means that the game isn't over yet. So we should still be listening for user input. Once the game is over, we don't wanna check to see what the user is typing out anymore. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the player that actually made this request. So we'll get back player and we are going to know if we got the right player if the socket IDs match. So next, let's go ahead and get the current word that the user has to type out. So we're going to say let word and we could check the words array since we have the current index that the player is on. So we'll just say player dot current word index. And this will give us the current word that the player has to type out. Next, we can check to see if the word matches the user input. So if the word matches the user input, that means this user has typed the word correctly. So what we're gonna do is advance the user to the next word. So we'll just say index, and we'll go ahead and increment that. Next, what we're gonna do is we need to check to see if they finished typing out everything. So in order to do that, we'll just say if player dot current word index does not equal game dot words dot length. That means that they have not finished typing out everything. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and save the game. And we are just gonna send them the updated game. Okay, so now if that is not true, that means that the player has officially saved the game. So what we need to do is get the timestamp of when he finished typing out the words. And afterwards, let's go ahead and pull out the start time for my game object. 
Next, what we're going to do is we are going to set the player's words per minute. And we're just going to pass in the end time, the start time, and the player. Okay, so I believe I covered this function uh, within a previous tutorial. So it is right here if you want to take a look at it. Okay, so that's going to give us the words per minute. And then afterwards, what we're going to do is save the game. And after we save the game, we are going to emit a done event. Now, remember for our countdown component, and if you guys don't remember, I think it's better if I just bring it up. So for our countdown component, when the game clock is going, if they finish early, we're going to listen for this done event and we are going to remove the listener for the timer. So that's going to stop the timer from updating. Okay. And afterwards, all we need to do is update the game. Okay, so I think we have enough so that we can start listening for the user's input. So let's go ahead and save this. Let us restart the server. And let's take a look to see if it's working or not. So here we go. We have our type racer. Let's click create game. Hit submit. We have our sentence. Let's click start game. And let's see if we can actually type out anything. Okay, so we got our first word within five seconds. So this appears to be working. And as you can see, my blazing fast speed within five seconds, I typed out uh, one word. But that's okay. And this is pretty much all I want to be covering for this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one.